Hello. This podcast is sponsored by aboutmeditation.com and our free How to Meditate mini course. Learn meditation in five easy lessons at aboutmeditation.com. Welcome to the One Mind Podcast from aboutmeditation.com. My name's Morgan Dix and I'm your host. On One Mind, we explore different angles on meditation, mindfulness, and health. We interview experts and everyday practitioners to bring you the stories, the science, and the exploration that will help you understand why this ancient practice is more relevant and important today than ever before. Hi, everyone. Today, I want to talk about perseverance on the path of meditation. And today, it's just me. It's one of these in between episodes. And before we dive into the topic, I wanted to ask you, can you please leave me a rating and a review? If you enjoy this podcast, why not let me know how I'm doing? Head on over to iTunes, leave me a rating and review, make a suggestion. What, what would you like me to cover on the show that I'm not already? I read all your comments. I am super grateful. And thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I Totally appreciate it. So back to the show. What does it take to keep going when, as the saying goes, the going gets tough, really tough? We all start on the path of meditation with high hopes, serious aspirations. For some of us, maybe guarded optimism. We suffer from stress and anxiety and overwhelm. Maybe, like I was, You're haunted by the feeling that there's something more to life than you can see, touch, taste, hear, or cognize just with your thinking rational mind. That it's close, but always just out of reach, an essence to life that for me, I was somehow missing. But that you know there is something that can help you make sense of life and all this chaos that we're swimming in all the time and it's so close. Or maybe you come like a refugee seeking some sort of relief and rest, a respite from your life. And maybe still you sense there's a profound potential for some greater unrealized opportunity to tap into your potential. You see, we all approach meditation for different variations on these themes. And the truth is, sometimes you're meditating and you just don't know if you should carry on. You're not seeing the results. You're not having the breakthroughs. You're not sure if you're even doing it right or if you're really cut out for meditation at all. So this podcast is for you, for the lone meditator who just doesn't know anymore if you should carry on and whether it's really worth it. So I wanted to start with this great motivational story. You might have heard it before, but it it bears repeating. It's so good. It comes from a classic book by Napoleon Hill, and it's called Three Steps from Gold. And it tells the story of Mr. R. U. Darby. So picture this. The scene is the great wild western United States. It's probably the late 1800s and the gold rush is going strong. And you see Darby's uncle, he had gold fever. So he staked his claim and he started digging. After a lot of hard work, Darby's uncle found a vein of golden ore. So he covered up his find And he returned home to raise the money for the machinery that he would need to bring the gold ore to the surface. So they raised the money 
and Darby traveled back with his uncle to the site to make their fortune. Things started well, and before long, they had enough gold to clear all their debts. They were excited. Everything from here on would be gravy, it would be profit, and things were looking good. But then something happened. The supply of gold dried up. The vein of ore just vanished, it disappeared. They kept on digging and digging and digging, but found nothing. So eventually, after a while, as you can imagine, they quit in frustration and they sold their machinery to a junk man for a few hundred dollars. And then they went home in disappointment. But meanwhile, there was that junk man, remember him? The one who bought all their equipment? He was clever. And he called in a mining engineer who checked the mine and calculated that there was a vein of gold just three feet from where Darby and his uncle had stopped digging. The junk man went on to make millions of dollars from that mine. So Darby returned home and he paid back everyone who had lent him money. But here's the thing. You'd think that Darby would have been crushed. He was just three feet from gold, from one of the greatest fortunes that came out of the gold rush. But no. See, he was determined to learn from his mistake of giving up too soon. And in fact, he went on to become a phenomenally successful insurance salesman more than recouping what he would have made from the gold mine. Now, for me, the moral of that story is so applicable to practicing meditation. What I've learned after 20 years is that there is only one good time to give up, and it's called never. Because in meditation, you are figuratively always three feet from gold. Because you don't ever know what's going to happen. But my experience tells me that practice is cumulative. And over time, you get compound returns from letting go again and again and again in meditation. You may not feel it. You may not know it. You may not see it. Because all of us are different. And we all have different karma in our paths and our processes They unfold differently. But after sitting for so long and wanting to throw in the towel more than a thousand times, I never did. And that simple fact, it made all the difference. So when you feel nothing is happening, when you feel that you've practiced meditation for long enough and you're not seeing any results, when you feel like sitting down to meditate is like standing on the edge of an endless desert with the sun beating down without mercy, not a green bush or a cool blue oasis in sight, just miles of dry sand, waves of heat, bending your vision. Or if you're sitting there and you feel like I often have, like when you were a kid in the nurse's office, at school, skipping class and waiting for time to pass, and you register every single click on that clock, that clock that looks like every other clock in the school and clicks with that same slow, endless echo because you're waiting. Or if you feel like a failure for giving up for the 20th time and you don't want to start over again at the bottom of the mountain because it stretches up and out of sight, into the clouds. To you, dear listener, I say this. Don't give up. I feel your pain. 
I've been there. So many of us have been there. So many times. If you feel like sitting down to meditate is like putting your brain in the blender, if you feel like everything was fine until you tried to slow down and count your breath, if you're beset with anxiety and stress and meditation only feels like an echo chamber that amplifies your exasperation, I'm with you. I've been there, dear listener. Hear me when I tell you that this too will pass. I promise it will. So what should you do? Meditate. Meditate and cast your cares, your fears, your worries. Abandon them to the wind. Abandon everything, all your hopes for a good meditation and all your fears of a bad meditation and run headlong into the cool, soul soothing surf of I don't care what the hell happens. Because you know why? Because who does care? To hell with all this careful tiptoeing around. It's time to throw yourself in with abandon and commit. Come hell or high water, commit. Because I don't know any better way, any more true north through the highs and lows of life than committing. All meditation does is mirror your relationship to life. You can't escape. That's part of the beauty of meditation. But you can commit with your whole heart. Sit it out like those unmoving pyramids in Giza. Unmoving, elegant, and powerful. Sit it out like the cool moon above, reflecting the rays of the sun in dispassionate calm and poise. Sit it out like the great albatross crossing the endless ocean with slow, steady wing beats, capturing the tailwinds when they come, making your own momentum when you need to. You see, we can't change much. As some great Buddhist said, relax, everything is out of control. I love that. We control so little of what runs through the circuits of our minds and our thoughts and our emotions. But we can sit and bear witness like a dignified and mighty mountain or a towering oak. We can sit there perfectly still and with perfect dignity. I say this because I can tell you with full confidence after 20 years of meditation, everything passes. It will change. You don't know when, but your effort will pay off. Slowly but steadily, you are building a foundation with every act of letting go. Every time you follow your meditation instructions, you slowly carve a new groove in your neural circuitry. You're building a subtle shift in behavior at the headwaters of your soul. So don't stop short of the goal. You might be three feet from that golden vein of stillness and peace. You don't know. But when it does, it's going to come up like a great whale from the blue depths of the ocean. And it's going to swallow you whole when you least expect it. And then you'll sit there in stunned awe at the unthinkable, ungraspable, dimensionless silence that lives inside of you. You'll discover this. It won't be like it was for me. It won't be like it was for anyone else you know. Your story and your journey is yours alone. It's going to unfold the way it will. Be patient and don't stop short. Don't give up. 
persevere. As the Sufi poet Rumi said, what you seek seeks you. Press on and let go even more. Resolve to follow your meditation instructions with greater energy and commit. So what happens if you stop? This is a helpful story that illuminates why it's so important to persevere. I love this story. I saw it on the web the other day. A psychologist walked around a room while teaching stress management to an audience. As she raised a glass of water, everyone expected they'd be asked the, quote, is the glass half empty or half full question. Instead, With a smile on her face, she inquired, How heavy is this glass of water? Answers called out ranged from 8 ounces to 20 ounces. And she replied, The absolute weight doesn't matter. It depends on how long I hold it. If I hold it for a minute, it's not a problem. If I hold it for an hour, I'll have an ache in my arm. If I hold it for a day... My arm is going to feel numb and paralyzed. In each case, the weight of the glass doesn't change. But the longer I hold it, the heavier it becomes. She continued, The stresses and worries in life are like this glass of water. Think about them for a while and nothing happens. Think about them a bit longer and they begin to hurt. And if you think about them all day long, you will feel paralyzed, incapable of doing anything. So it's important to remember to let go of your stresses. Do it often so you don't get bent over from the weight of your problems. Learn how to let go. Be patient with yourself. Remember to put down the glass of water. See, I love that story because it it summarizes so much in a really simple way what meditation is all about, what letting go is really all about and why it's so important. See, if you stop now, the cost is going to be great. Instead, why not keep investing? Stay the course. Reap the benefits of daily practice and invest in the part of you that, if we are to believe the great teachers through the ages, the part of us that never sleeps, that never dies, that never moves. It's the still and silent tissue that knits the universe into a web of wholeness. And you are not alone in this struggle. That's so important to remember. We're all laboring and stretching and growing towards greater awareness every day. I always have to remind myself of that. And at any moment, you may be three feet from that choice that changes everything. That choice to let go and unburden yourself from a weight that's been gathering for your whole life. Let's say that moment never comes, at least in the way that you imagine it will. Still, you can trust in the towering sovereignty of your own intention, effort, and yes, grit. Because in the end, that's what it boils down to, doesn't it? Grit. Every day you sit down to meditate is a victory, no matter what you think or what you feel. It's an incredible act of independence. I ask you to please be gentle with yourself and press on.